Halloween Mask might have hit Netflix in 2021, but did you know it's been on Mike Flanagan's mind for years? Hey, it's Kristen, and today we're diving into all the Easter eggs I could find in Mike Flanagan's latest horror hit, Midnight Mass. Consider subscribing if you like my videos, and drop down in the comments and let me know if you caught any Easter eggs that I might have missed. So Midnight Mass might have hit Netflix in 2021, but did you know it's been on Mike Flanagan's mind for years? When he directed Hush in 2016, he had Kate Siegel's character, Maddie Young, a deaf horror author, write the book Midnight Mass. And when they needed footage of Maddie writing the book, they brought up Mike Flanagan's own real life abandoned novel. Specific lines about the Jesus fish on the back of a luxury car and details about Riley's drunk driving accident from the novel are seen here and are the first moments of the Netflix series as well. Later, Kate ended up playing Erin while Samantha Sloan, who loved the book and Riley and Erin's relationship, takes on the role of the religious villain, Bev Keen. In Hush, Maddie is also trying to write a sequel to Midnight Mass called Sweetwater, but is having a hard time figuring out what Erin is up to next. Could Sweetwater be a possible next project for Mike Flanagan? Then in 2017, they needed some knickknacks to go on the shelf above the bed in Gerald's game, and one of the items is the Midnight Mass book, and they have Jesse, played by Carla Gugino, grab that book and throw it. So there's another Midnight Mass reference before we even had the series. There are also some other call-outs to Gerald's game in the Midnight Mass show, like we see Bev dropping off mail at the Joubert home, and Joubert was the real name of the Moonlight Man in Gerald's game, and even the Moonlight Man and the Angel in Midnight Mass have some similarities in terms of their bloodlust and even their pale, bald appearances. Diving deeper into the series, following the brutal drunk driving accident, Riley stands in court for sentencing, and while we don't get to see the judge's face, the voice of the judge has been confirmed to be Carlo Gugino, and as we mentioned, she's one of Flanagan's regular stars that he works with. Mike Flanagan has also called this his most personal project yet, and even makes some cameos in it. There's a great Easter egg uh, early on you can see Mike Flanagan having a cup of coffee um, in one of the homes as, as the kids are riding past on the bike. Um, it's like a Hitchcock thing Mike put himself in, which I love. I love that he's technically part of the cast as well. And later on, we see him trying to help Monsignor Pruitt on his trip. We also get a call out to the Haunting of Hill House with Henry Thomas's iconic blue shirt. During Father Paul and Riley's AA meetings, you can actually spot the Oculus mirror, which Flanagan has hidden in so many of his projects. It's behind them in the profile shots on stage. And Flanagan even said in an interview with Entertainment Weekly that his goal is to make it all very convoluted, very connected, um, he wants all of his projects to just be one big ball of rubber bands by the time they're done with it just impossible to extricate from each other because of all these connections there are also a ton of pop culture references in Midnight Mass from posters for Seven and the X-Files and Scream to characters reading Stephen King's revival and Jenny Hans to all the boys Riley even has a bookshelf in his room full of Stephen King and Christopher Pike books including King's Salem's Lot which this show has been getting a lot of comparisons to and if you dig a little bit deeper some of these might actually be hinting at storylines for instance, with Seven, there's that iconic line, what's in the box? And then when we see that big trunk that Father Paul has brought with him, that definitely kind of comes full circle. What's in the box? Revival talks about religion and miracles. The death of our seemingly main character feels very Scream-esque. When it comes to the X-Files, you have Dana Scully in the Revelation episode, who's very skeptical, questioning religious beliefs. That could also be a little shout out to fellow Midnight Mass co-star Annabeth Fish, who also starred on the X-Files. Raul Coley even revealed that his character Sheriff Hassan was dressed to pay homage homage to Joel of The Last of Us. For me personally, I we put in I put in a couple of things myself. The sheriff's look um was inspired or at least his haircut and beard and stuff like that was inspired by the character Joel in The Last of Us. Um that was my little homage. And he took inspiration from iconic western characters and moments diving into the works of like Clint Eastwood. It was a conscious decision for me to study um the sheriff and you know which i'm a big <clears throat> fan of the western genre anyway so it was a great excuse to watch like clint eastwood again and and the man with no name and uh timothy oliphant as, as in deadwood as seth bullock and and really kind of piece together what the silhouette is what are, what's the what's the thread what are they all doing what are the common poses what's that uh and then have this face uh, and so people could get the silhouette and feel like I've seen this before. He carries himself like what I've seen in previous stuff, only he's now praying. He'd now doing his daily prayer. I'd love to hear if you caught any other Easter eggs. And if you like this one, you can check out more of my Midnight Mass videos right over here. Catch you in the next one. See ya.